Welcome to Worship with Knox Church, Dunedin, New Zealand. I'm Kerry, the minister at Knox, and it's my privilege to lead us in a time of prayer and reflection. Welcome, now am I, hide my. The psalm for the day comes from Psalm 145, and I want to read a part of it, um, a translation or a rendition of it by Nan Merrill, our call to worship. My soul yearns for you, eternal flame of love, longing to reconnect to the great mystery. Every day I will bless you as I follow the voice of truth. Greater you, who call us to childlike wonder, to the healing balm of forgiveness. Lift up your hearts, all you who choose the path of life. My heart is lifted up. And God says, Do you not know that your whole being is encompassed by my love? I am the infinite and the eternal within your soul. Oh, that I might make myself known to you. Choose love, that you might overcome oppression and blind obedience to false idols. We come to God with a prayer of praise and confession, and it's based on Eugene Peterson's translation of Paul's letter to the church at Rome, chapter 7. But I begin the prayer with an image from our gospel for the day about yokes. Let us pray. Overwhelmed by challenges, short on answers, with more questions than we can imagine, uncertain about the future, the yoke can feel rough and heavy, awkward and bruising on our shoulders. Living with the consequences of choices we once made, the hard ground can cause us to stumble, and the yoke can feel confining and harsh and rubbing. And so with Paul we cry of the power that sabotages our best intentions, the yoke that rides hard on our spirits and on our body. With Paul we say, I can will it, but I cannot do it. I decide to do good, but I don't really do it. I decide not to do bad, but then I do it anyway. Something has gone wrong deep within me. It keeps tripping me up. I truly delight in God's commands, but it's pretty obvious that not all of me joins in that delight. Is there no one who can do anything for me? Jesus Christ acted to set things right in this life of contradictions. And Jesus said, My yoke is easy and my burden is light. God, yoke of love and hope, we praise you. Christ, wisdom of God, calling on the corner for justice and freedom, we praise you. Holy Spirit, Wairua Tapu, our bread and our life, we praise you. We pray in the name of Christ. Amen. Jesus said, My yoke is easy and my burden is light. God places on our shoulders the lifting yoke of grace, the easy burden of forgiveness, turning us from the power of sin to the life-giving Spirit of God. Etefano, in Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. The peace of Christ be with you. And now a prayer 
for illumination as we come to listen for the readings for today. Gracious God, take hold of any tiredness and energy we have, any restlessness and yearning, any struggles and dreams, and rest on our shoulders the yoke of your hope and embrace us with your warm, encompassing love. That all of the days we live, we may be prisoners of hope. In Christ we pray. Amen. The first reading for today from the Bible comes from the book of Zechariah, chapter 9, verses 9 to 12. Rejoice greatly, O, daughters of, o daughter Zion! Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem! Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem. And the battle bow shall be cut off and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. And the Gospel is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 16 and following. Jesus is speaking. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another, We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He is a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Thanks be to God for these readings from the Bible, and my, may God grant us understanding of them. Amen. And now, the reflection. I want to begin by referring to that reading from Zechariah. It was a time when hopes had run high. The people had come through a very long and difficult period. They'd faced down major challenges. And now it seemed that life was improving. And they waited, and they waited, and they yearned and they yearned. 
and in the end life didn't improve as much as they thought. How do you hold on to hope and become what Zechariah calls prisoners of hope when there is so much to despair about? Let me give a little of the background to that reading from Zechariah. The temple had been destroyed and people had been taken into exile. And now, 70 years later, the de descendants of the exiles were returning to their ancestral homeland. They contemplated independence and the restoration of the monarchy, but their dreams never materialised. The foreign kings of Persia ruled for another 200 years, only to be replaced by Greek rule and then by Roman rule. A prayer in Nehemiah expresses how they felt. Here we are, slaves to this day. The land's rich yield goes to the kings whom you have set over us. They have power also over our bodies, and over our livestock at their pleasure, and we are in great distress. Long years of yearning met with nothing but unbearable subjugation. How could they continue to hope when the fulfilment of their hope seemed less and less likely as the centuries rolled on? The centuries. In our own land, for a period of time, there was a remarkable national spirit. Collectively, we stopped the spread of COVID-19. How inspiring it was to see across our country people helping each other in remarkable ways. Maybe, we thought, that with this spirit we could achieve much more, not just addressing a virus, but many other of our major national challenges. We thought that maybe our spirit was buoyant enough to carry us forward, but then something happened. Our public health system that had been run down over a long period struggled and sputtered. Despite there being no community transmission, which is an incredible achievement, the struggles were highlighted and amplified. We had to blame someone, even though we know that a public health system develops over many years. And then it became politically partisan, mirroring what we have seen overseas. And so the short-term blame buried the long-term possibilities. And there was a downward spiral that chewed up the hope we had. Our memory of acting together despite mistakes was picked apart, picked over, until we wonder how we ever hoped for a different future. And that naturally leads to weariness and the struggle of carrying burdens and a longing for rest. How often have we seen this in organisations and nations and churches and in society itself? So let's look to Zechariah again. Because that was the situation the people faced This is what Zechariah says in different words. The one to change our fortunes, the hopeful one, identifies with the people who are poor and oppressed. That one will lead people onto the streets and lead them with a donkey, not a war horse. That one we know, we believe, was embodied in the way Jesus entered the city of Jerusalem, even in the face of powers determined to quash the movement. Matthew names what his followers faced. 
He talks about how no matter how truth is spoken, people struggle to recognize it as truth, as wisdom. He calls it wisdom. So there was John the Baptist who came, abstemious, disciplined, highlighting injustice. And people accused him of having a demon. He wailed and the people wouldn't mourn. By contrast, Jesus came, eating and drinking, and people called him a drunkard and a glutton. He played the flute, and people wouldn't dance. John was too serious, and Jesus wasn't serious enough. Jesus does not conform to our hope for a strong leader or a fake messiah. Jesus points to the figure of wisdom, wisdom with a capital W, an underlying truthful active feminine presence in the world, deeper than superficial judgments, and standing on the street corner, highlighting injustice and continually speaking truth, a power at work in our world, a presence we cannot see. Despite all of the superficial dismissing of people around her, she is working away resiliently in our world, influencing, affecting in ways we cannot see. But she invites us to join her as people of wisdom. So wisdom is a power and a present active in our community. If we would but listen, we would hear her speaking. Wisdom gives us the capacity to understand things beyond our sensory perception. The figure of wisdom is truthful, and she's right in front of us day by day by day if we would only open our eyes to her. And in our faith we believe that Christ is the wisdom of God. And so comes an invitation that is known to many of us, an invitation that comes from the long tradition of wisdom. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. In Proverbs, we hear wisdom beckoning people to a feast that she's prepared. Come, she says, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity and live. Walk in the way of insight. And so we turn to Matthew's quoting of Jesus, using the image of the yoke. Jesus was highlighting the significance of instruction for us. For in rabbinic literature of the time, the yoke was used to describe obedience to the Torah, to the law. In following Jesus, he says, we are yoked to wisdom. Living his way isn't meant to be a burden or a load. It's not about keeping a set of moral standards or complying with a long list of laws. It is rather about enjoying a relationship in which the Christ steadily influences us. We are yoked to him. It's a double yoke. I'm old enough to remember what they looked like. And so his deep, his life-giving power is meant to transform our deepest desires into passions, passions for God's just and powerful reign in the world. We aren't self-made people. We aren't people left to our own resources to achieve conventional goals like wealth and personal success. 
Those are the goals that exhaust us, that make our shoulders sag, that leave us perpetually restless. We are invited instead to receive the gentle yoke, that gentle yoke that engages our deepest hopes for life, for life that is true and abundant for everyone, that deep young longing for a world that is just for all of creation. Hope that sees beyond troubles and difficulties to a future that wisdom proclaims that Jesus embodies and that God is bringing. And our call in the midst of this is to be yoked to Christ, to be yoked to hope, to be yoked to to wisdom because in all of us together so yoked there is hope may it be so for you and for me Amen we pray that those weighed down would be lifted up that those who have been bruised by life would receive healing, that those who carry heavy burdens would be upheld, and that those who yearn for life in its fullness may, may receive the wonderful gift of Christ. In thankfulness for all we, you do for us, great God, we praise you. Amen. And now a blessing. Jesus said, My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold fast to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honour all people. Love and serve the Lord your God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face to you and give you peace. Kia tau tonu te rangamarie. Kia koutou, the peace of Christ be